Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let's look at some keyboard shortcuts that you maybe shouldn't be using. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than a thousand supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So keyboard shortcuts are great. Everybody loves keyboard shortcuts. But it doesn't mean you should always use them. There are some keyboard shortcuts that have better alternatives that are often overlooked. First, let's talk about the keyboard shortcuts for screenshots. To take a screenshot, a lot of people will tell you, use Shift Command 3 or Shift Command 4. And these indeed are the keyboard shortcuts that date back many years for taking screenshots. However, there's a better alternative now. Use Shift Command 5. This brings up the full set of screenshot controls here at the bottom. You can switch from entire screen, a window, a selection. You can do screen recordings. And you've got all of the different options right here in a single menu. It's easy to use and you don't have to remember different keyboard shortcuts for different functions. Now the other keyboard shortcuts are really useful if you take lots of screenshots, like many per hour. Then maybe you want a quick shortcut to do exactly what you want. But for most of us, even myself included, and I take a lot of screenshots, Shift Command 5 is the way to go because it gives you all of the options and it's just one shortcut to remember. Next, let's look at launching apps. Now, the common wisdom is to use Spotlight to launch apps. Everybody will tell you that. I've even said that many times in many different videos over the years. You do Command Space, it brings up Spotlight, you search for the app that you want, and then it comes up. But notice how there was a tiny bit of delay for the app to come up. That happens sometimes and it can get in the way because if you quickly type those letters and then return, it might not launch the app because you didn't wait long enough. It's a little annoying. I find a better way to launch apps is actually to use Launchpad. Now I know a lot of you are going to say Launchpad's horrible. I hate Launchpad. But what I'm talking about is not using Launchpad in the way you're probably thinking. I'm talking about triggering the keyboard shortcut and then using it in exactly the same way as Spotlight. It doesn't search for other things like Spotlight does. It just focuses on apps. So it's lightning fast. On some keyboards, there's even a Spotlight key. For me on my keyboard, F4 will bring up Spotlight instantly. Then I could type just like with Spotlight and return just like with Spotlight. But it always works lightning fast so there's no delay. So at the very least, it's just as good as using Spotlight. But sometimes it's better. Now if you don't have a Spotlight shortcut on your keyboard, you can set one up yourself. Just go to System Preferences and then Keyboard and then Shortcuts and then click on Launchpad and Dock here at the top. Activate the Show Launchpad shortcut and set it to something. Now since Command Space brings up Spotlight, setting it to something like Control Space kind of makes sense. So now I've got Control Space to bring up Launchpad, Type, Return, Launch, no problem. Now I often hear from people that are using lots of different desktop spaces. If I look at Mission Control here, I can see I've got my desktop and I've got three full screen apps. Switching between the apps sometimes takes a few keystrokes because either you launch Mission Control like this and then you click on the space you want or use Control right arrow and left arrow to go between them. But what if you have four, five, six different full screen apps? You have to do Control right arrow a bunch of times to get to where you want. But what a lot of people overlook is simply using the app switcher. Just because the apps full screen doesn't mean you can't use the app switcher. Command tab and continue to hold the command key down and then tab to go to the app you want will show you all of your apps whether they're in a desktop space or full screen and when you select the app it will jump right to that space. doesn't matter if it's far away like I've got photos here and mail here. So if I'm in photos if I do command tab and then I go to mail it will jump all the way to that space, skipping the full screen apps in between. Now another common keyboard shortcut is using Command N for File New Window. This will create a new window like here in the Finder. Command N, I've got two Finder windows here. But often we forget that tabs are better than windows in many situations. And the keyboard shortcut for that in many apps is Command T for New Tab. So if I want to look at two different places in the Finder here or maybe two different documents in an app, two different locations in Safari, I can just use Command T to open up a new tab. So you can see I've got two different tabs. I could be looking at different locations 
in both of those tabs and easily switch between them. Of course Control Tab will be the keyboard shortcut for going between tabs. And just because they are tabs and you can only look at one at a time doesn't mean you can't drag and drop between them. I can drag this file over to this tab. You can see it switches to it and then I can drop it in here. Now when looking in files in the Finder we often want to preview what's there. Like I can't really tell from the icon what this image is. But I could use the Space Bar to bring up Quick Look. Quick Look is very handy and something you should definitely know about and use except that a lot of times it gets in the way. Here it's in the way of the other files. They are hidden behind them. If I use the Down Arrow for instance I'll go to the next file but I can't really see what's selected. So sometimes Quick Look isn't the best way to go. You can preview files in the Finder using the Preview pane which appears to the right. You're probably used to seeing that in the Column View where it appears automatically. But it actually can appear in any view. Here I am in List View. I can go to View, Show Preview or Shift Command P. It will bring up the preview here on the right which is usually plenty big enough to be able to see what I'm dealing with. And You can drag the line here to actually change the size. And Now it never gets in the way of the files that you have selected. I try to use the preview area here as much as possible and I find when I do so I rarely need to use Quick Look. Next let's talk about some really old keyboard shortcuts like using Command B for bold. So you may want to select some text and use Command B to bold and then go and select some other text and use Command B for bold and it works great except that you should probably avoid doing that. Why? Well what if you bold a hundred things in the book you're working on and decide that you also want to make them a separate color. Now you've got to go and find all 100 things and change the color of each one individually. Instead use Character Styles here. There's already one for Emphasis which we could use or we could style the first one like we want. Like let's use Command B for Bold but then in addition to that also change the color and now I'm going to click Character Styles, click Plus and change this to Bold Blue like that. And Now I can easily use that somewhere else by selecting the Character Style changing to Bold Blue. And Yes, I can set a keyboard shortcut for that. I go into here and then I click there. One of the things I can do is Shortcut and I can set one of the F keys to be a shortcut for this. Now the advantage to this besides being able to have a keyboard shortcut that does more than just bold, it can change the style in many ways, is you can change the style throughout your document. So I can go to this first one here that's change the color to something else. And then I could go here and update and what will happen is it will update the style and since this also used that same character style it updates that as well. So I could have this a hundred or a thousand times throughout the document and easily update it to a different style. And Finally let's look at the keyboard shortcut that we all use, Command Q for Quit. Now Command Q is perfectly fine to use if that's exactly what you want. But a lot of times people will use it and then be surprised to find that when they relaunch the app the windows that they had open before are open again. The setting for this is in System Preferences under General and then there's a setting here for close windows when quitting app. So if you have this checked then when you quit an app windows will indeed be closed. But instead let yourself quit apps like Pages while you're right in the middle of things and relaunch them and pick up right where you're left off. I love doing that. So instead of using Command Q you have two alternatives. One is under File here you'll see Close, Command W. I use Command W all the time. What Command W does is it closes the current window and thus the document in that window. It leaves the app running. This is great if you're switching documents. So you want to close one Pages document and open another. There's no reason you need to quit Pages right in the middle of doing that. Use Command W to close and then double click on whatever document you want to open it or use File Open to get to it. The other thing you can do is if you notice Quit here has a companion. If you hold down the Option key you'll see it changes to Quit and Close Windows. So Option Command Q will quit and close Windows. So you can have the best of both worlds without changing things in System Preferences. Command Q to quit and then relaunch with all of the old windows or Option Command Q to quit and close all the windows at the same time. That will reverse if you change things in System Preferences General. If I check this then I'll notice that Quit says Quit Pages. Option now says Quit and Keep Windows. 
So there are some things you should think about when using seven common keyboard shortcuts. They're not always the best way to go. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.